Thanks, everyone. Um, good evening. My name is Daniel Mastretta, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about a project that I developed in the uh, last few months called uh, PXVX, Turning Nostalgia into Glitch Sculptures. It's a, a computer software I developed to create some art sculptures that I really wanted to make. So this project lives uh, in the world of like the glitch, the real, and the virtual world. And it all tries to uh, address the fact that video games and the things we grew up with have historical relevance. So if we see graphics from video games in the 90s when the 2D became the 3D, uh, we were really trying to be make reality happen, stuff look very real, but now we have it. And now it's not important to make real things anymore. Now a little bit of what happened in the turn of the 20th century with photography, uh, there was no more need of making like very realistic paintings uh, in order to uh, give meaning to the world. If you see the work of the post-impressionists, you can see how they were using bright colors and they were using um, blurriness and they were using another kind of way of looking at the world to really show what the world looked like to them and to create an aesthetic experience for us. So uh, it became very important and very interesting to me to see how the people in the world that grew up in the 90s and the 80s are starting to create this type of very strange things like this computer graphics that live in the real world. Uh, this uh, goes back to what James Bryan was talking with his new aesthetic, uh, this whole idea of people creating stuff that looks like the past. So, of course, I'm a video gamer, and I've been playing games since I was a kid, so I just had to make an excuse to use video games as research and play every single night and saying I was working. So, for this, uh, I started thinking about a video game that I hold very dear, which is King's Quest One, a game that I grew up with. And there's something very interesting about these sprites. If you see that character, he is already three-dimensional. He was thought to be three-dimensional because he was walking in a three-dimensional environment. So what I just did is I uh, grabbed three Studio Max and I made every single pixel into a box and see how this character would look if he was a 3D sculpture. And this is what I created, but it was hard to do and it was very manual. Then I made an animation cycle and once I was making it, something weird happened. All of the animation uh, frames became cluttered into one uh, frame. And this was very interesting. This became like a very strange glitch sculpture that did not look like the original, but it had some sort of uh, old quality to it, but looked a little bit new. So how could I create a program that would make this type of objects? Uh, I basically come from an architecture background, so I felt like an architect. When you're doing architecture, you grab like the six faces that make a house or something, you project them into the middle, and you create an object. So what I did, I did exactly the same thing. I would rip the sprites from the, the games, take all the faces I could get from them, take the alpha channel, take the course, and then tell the program to make a model in the center. So I created this uh, software in open frameworks called uh, PXVX. It's a weird name, I'm sorry. And uh, what it basically does is grabs a PNG file that I make out of the graphics that I rip from the games, and it just mashes them into the middle and creates whatever object the program uh, calculates. So if you see this uh, image here, this is basically the six faces that created the sculpture you see in the middle. And it really represents what the program does. But let's get a little bit to it and see what happens if I actually pass the video game graphic centers. Um, this is Charizard from Pokemon. And what I totally love about this sculpture is that it's not a character. It's not exactly a, a, a little dragon or exactly a little animal. It's something else. It's three-dimensional. It's a new object that looks like an old object. It's my nostalgia passed through my new uh, experience. So the natural course was to print these things and see how they would look in the real world. There's no point in making them if you can't hold them. So uh, I did Ryu and Mega Man and I did Link from uh, The Legend of Zelda and I glitched them and I played with them and I rotated them and the whole idea was to be able to grab these pieces, to be able to have these objects that I hold very dear and not like a thing that you would go to Urban Outfitters and buy, like a, but, but mostly like some sort of art piece that you could sit down and look upon and reflect because this is what video games are to us, the people who grew up with them. This is an inspiration and inspiration becomes art and you have to be very clever to use these new tools like 3D printing and color for 3D art so you can make things that actually inspire you and talk about who you are and what you're doing and not just think about it, uh, like uh, the technical qualities of it and people look at it and say, oh, that's 3D printing, that's cool. No, there's a lot of thought behind it and there's a lot of passion behind it. So if anybody wants to keep in touch and talk about this project a little bit more, uh, my Twitter is my 
my easiest way at DNTTA. I'm uh, currently free to work whatever you want, and I'm completely free to talk about my project any single time. Thank you.